Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so what we're going to do today is we are going to investigate um, how can we use our idea of a definite integral in the area under a curve to actually find the volume um, that's contained when we revolve a curve around the axis. Okay, so what we're looking at is volumes of, sol volumes of solids and revolutions. Um, so what does this look like? Basically, so it's called the disk method, and what it means is that if we have a curve, and so let's say that we have a curve that looks like that, okay? And we want to find the volume that's that we get by enclosing uh, a part of that curve, right? So let's say we cut the curve off here and here, okay? Well, what happens if we let that curve revolve all the way around the x-axis, okay? So all these parts are going to revolve around the axis. Well, what ends up happening is we end up with this 3D solid that's actually made up of a little um, cylinders, okay? So if you think back to how we figured out the area under a curve, we took um, the curve and we split it up into rectangles. Well, now what I'm doing is I'm taking those rectangles and I am rotating them, turning them into um, little disks. Okay, so that's why it's called the disk method. Okay, so this applet here um, shows it well. Here's one of the disks. Okay, so remember what we're going to do is we're going to add up all of these disks. Right, so we're going to add up all the volumes of the disks and we'll get a total volume. Okay, and what that's going to look like is, so here's my y equals x squared, and I'm going to rotate that, and there's the three image that appears once we rotate it. All right, so um, let's figure out how we actually find that volume. Okay, so there's the picture of the applet. Okay, now how do we find this actual volume of this disk here? Okay. Well, remember the volume of a of, um, cylinder is pi r squared. Okay, so it's pi r squared times height, right? So pi r squared times the height, okay? So in this case, pi is pi, I'm fine with that. The height is actually delta x. All right, so remember that from the um, from the area under a curve. So pi is delta x, and the radius. If we look back to the applet, the radius actually changes as I change the x value. Right, so the radius is always along f of x. Okay, so that's the radius there. Right, that's the radius there. So the radius is actually always the same as the value of f of x, right? So that's going to be that. And then when I sum up all of these, right, that's when we get the actual volume, right? So the volume is going to be represented as the integral from a to b of pi r squared h, right? Pi r squared h. And now this pi is just a constant, so we can just do this. It makes our life a little bit easier. Okay? So let's apply that to an example. So we have y equals e to the negative x. First, let's decide what that looks like. So you should know that e to the x just looks like that. So e to the negative x is going to look like that. And now if we turn it into a three-dimensional solid by rotating, okay, what we get is we'll get this three-dimensional um, 
part of a cone. Okay, so we want to find the volume of that, and let's actually see exactly what it looks like on this applet here. So this is e to the negative x. This here is one of those rectangles that we have for the area, and now if I rotate that rectangle, it actually gives me the cylinder. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up all these cylinders, and we'll end up with that volume. Okay, so there's the answer that we should get. So let's do it. So my volume is always going to be pi and then the integral from 0 to 1 because that's my boundaries, right? And then the radius, which we said is f of x squared dx. Okay? So this is going to be pi. Now I'm just going to simplify before I integrate. So this simplifies to e to the negative 2x dx. Right? And now we have to integrate. So the integral of e to the negative 2x is e to the negative 2x. And remember where before we would multiply by the derivative of 2x, we're now going to divide by the derivative. And we're going to evaluate from 0 to 1. Okay? So what that means is we're going to plug in our upper boundary, so e to the negative 2 over negative 2, and we're going to plug in our lower boundary, e to the 0 over negative 2, and now we'll simplify. So this is negative 1 over e squared times 2, right? So that 2 is there. e to the negative 2 can come to the bottom and become a positive 2, and the negatives from there. And this will be minus, but minus negative, so really it'll be plus 1 over 2. Okay? So now, what I want to do is I want to simplify this a little bit. So I'm just going to move the positive part to the front and the negative part to the back. So 1 half minus 1 over 2e to the 2, right? And now I can get a common denominator, right? So I've already got a 2 there, so I just need to multiply the top and the bottom here by e squared. So this will be e squared over 2e squared minus 1 over 2e squared. And now since I have a common denominator, I can say that that's equal to pi and then e squared minus 1 over 2e squared. And if you plug this into your calculator, you can get an approximate answer, which I think according to the applet should be 1.358. Okay, so you can check that out and make sure that it works out on the calculator. So 1.358 units squared. Oh, sorry, units cubed because it's now a volume. Okay. Um, so here's the homework. We are going to work on this for another day. So if you get stuck, don't stress. Okay. So we'll work on this um, in class tomorrow. And we will also do another example tomorrow night. All right. Thank you. And I'll see you guys in class.